We have a special Ask GC Anything for you this week, coming to you from Eurobike. Uh, I have the pleasure of having alongside me Giovanni Fogal. Fogal? I was saying Fogel before, but it's Fogal. Uh, he is the product manager at Physique. So we've been asking you to send in your saddle and shoe specific questions. Uh, I've collated some of the best ones and we're going to go through them now. Uh, first up from James Hobbs. What is the most underrated innovation in shoes and saddles? Uh, in shoes. For what concerns shoes, I would say the fitting system, you know. Uh, back in the days we used to see like construction, but it was similar to a sneakers, like with uh, an upper with uh, a tongue basically and some laces. Whereas today you can find some uh, more asymmetric construction of the upper that takes into account more of the uh, anatomy of the foot. And uh, probably you've seen in our range we make extensive use of a boa dial and the BOA wiring system, so that allowed the micrometric adjustment of how tight is going to be the, the, the upper on your foot. And uh, I have to say we even improved that by finding new ways of wiring the system, like the Infinito uh, configuration that you find in the Infinito R1. And uh, on top of that, we keep on pushing forward and for example this year we also introduce uh, a new feature which is the arch support, which is a part of the upper which is has a specific purpose basically hugging you know the, the the mid arch of the foot you know so basically it has improved in a way the the, the fitting is right for your foot you know your my, my, my shape of foot can be different to yours you know and we want to make sure everyone gets the proper fitting for the best riding experience for what concerns saddles um, I would say uh, the way I are designed do not take into account just uh, how my body is made and how a geometry of the bike it is. But today we also take into account what the riding experience I want to get. Okay, so for example, for the same kind of bike, for the same of kind of physique that I might have, I might look for something different in terms of like how the saddle respond. You know, how, how, what the, what is the uh, uh, riding surface? You know, and uh, for example, the uh, new Versus Evo are the perfect example of, of this kind of mindset we're putting into designing a new saddle. Okay. Uh, some of you might have seen the Versus Evo, so I've done an unboxing on that and we took a look uh, on our first tech piece here at Eurobike as well. Uh, on to the next question then. Uh, Jake Bailey, uh, this is a question we get quite often actually. He finds mountain bike shoes and pedals to be a lot more comfortable to use uh, even when he's on his road bike. So he wants to know what makes road shoes and pedals preferable for road cyclists. Well, I think that feeling for to have a mountain bike shoes to be more comfortable is that usually they have more wider fit, you know? Like, the, the, the one thing you want to have in a road cycle is power transfer, and that usually brings, in terms of design, a very snug fit and very uh, stiff outer sole, okay? Because that what you really want to transfer all the, all the power to the pedals, you know? Whereas in mountain biking, we have... Uh, Different uh, aspects that come into play, you know, comfort throughout time because you, 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 you go into a more bumping surface. So usually the manufacturer tends to include a little bit more cushioning and comfort, you know. So in, in if you compare the two, you know, it, it's usually you get a feeling that a mountain bike shoes, it's a, a little bit more comfortable, but it, it, it really comes down to the kind of riding you're, you're, you're looking for. So that's the big difference. Yeah, how much of a difference do you think there is in the power transfer between you know a pair of your mountain bike shoes uh, on mountain bike pedals versus road shoes on road pedals? I mean, theoretically, you want to get the same power transfer in, in, in both type of like applications. It's just a matter of, like, of compromise. Obviously, in mountain bike, you cannot exclude uh, the type of comfort you want to get. You know, over time, going through a rough surface, whereas. Uh, in, in, uh, in road cycling, you can be more strict on that. Uh, moving on to the next question, it comes in uh, from David Johnson. Uh, what's the most comfy saddle from Physique? Again, a question that we get here a lot at GCN, and there's no uh, real answer to that, because what is best for one person is not best for everybody else. Uh, but you do have ways of telling people what might be uh, the best saddle for them through your fitting concept. Yeah, as you said, it's kind of difficult to define comfort universally for everyone. Everyone is different, everyone has a different type of riding experience, or every type, different type of goal whenever they ride a bicycle. So what we take into account, and we've been doing that for quite a while through our spine concept, is considering basically uh, your, your pelvic rotation in order to choose the right profile of the saddle. So as you know, we have three different type of uh, profiles. 
and uh, based on your flexibility, based your, on your average speed that you might want to get during your ride, we, we can suggest you the right saddle that would you fit, you know, your kind of riding style and, and body in order to be most comfortable as possible. We've got another question really which leads on from that, uh, from Jonathan James Cobb. Uh, he's asking what's the easiest way of finding out which expensive saddle uh, will be comfortable without actually buying it. And it's a good point because uh, they're not cheap, are they, the top end saddles? And you want to make sure it's the right one for you uh, before you make that investment. Uh, is there a way that you can just try saddles out before you buy? Yeah, for sure. I mean, as I said, first of all, the easiest and most straightforward uh, um, things you can do is just follow the instruction of our uh, spine concept evo uh, you basically follow the instruction and based on some tests that you can do even at home you kind of get in the right direction of the saddle that you're looking for if you want to get the real feeling you know of how the saddle is going to fit on you you can go in our uh, official dealers you know they usually have some programs in which you can try the saddle on your bicycle you know and, and so you can try before you're buying it and don't think about stealing it, they do it in very garish colours so that you don't uh, ride away into the sunset with it, so you will give it back. Uh, next up, Stefan says, all shoes I have tested uh, seem to be made for hot weather, 30 degrees, uh, and a ventilator better than an open car roof. He lives in Norway and wants to know if you have any suggestions for road shoes suitable for Scandinavian conditions. Uh, I'm going to take this one again, actually, because yesterday uh, we found that they had launched these, which I would have loved to train through the English winter time, uh, which is awful. Probably not as bad as Scandinavia, but these are the Arctic shoes, aren't they? Uh, with fleece lining. They're going to be really, really snug. Probably too hot until it gets towards freezing point. But, yeah, what a shoe that looks. Yeah, exactly. The point is, like, there's no worst you know like there's no bad weather for riding it's just bad gear you know so we designed the shoes that suits that kind of condition uh, it's the first uh, winter shoe we design it's all integrated in a booty uh, configuration it does have a membrane so it's completely waterproof and it keeps you warm okay so we're pretty excited about that you know it's a pretty sleek design um, it does have a, um, a water repellent uh, zipper uh, and a pulley in the inside so you, you still get the, the, the all the functionality of a regular riding shoe with all the benefits you know of keeping you warm and dry and so you can go on you know even with bad weather. They actually look quite aero to me as well you might even go fast with those ones on. Uh, okay next up Timmy Nguyen shouldn't have even tried to pronounce your surname I'm so sorry. Uh, what's the difference between a cheap and an expensive saddle? Okay, so between a cheap and expensive saddle, most of the time is a matter of uh, materials that are used, you know. Some materials can be more sophisticated and more uh, uh, expensive, and why so? Uh, with better materials, we can have uh, better durability, better response to the kind of fatigue we're looking for, or just they're just lighter, you know. Think about carbon fiber, you know, usually that what makes a saddle more expensive. The other aspect that comes into play is the construction. The more manufacturing effort comes into realizing a, a, a saddle, the more expensive it is. Uh, but at least for what concerns physique, I can ensure that every set, the, the effort that we put in the development of every saddle is the same, regardless of the price point. You know, It's just the materials that are being used according to what a rider might look for. Uh, related to that, we also had a question in from somebody who was asking how do you know what the lifespan of a saddle is uh, and how can you tell when it's getting towards the end of its lifespan? So do you have a certain number of kilometers that you can ride, for example, on a physique saddle? Yeah, again, it's hard uh, to tell, like, to give an exact number because there are so many variables that come into play. I can tell you that at physique, usually we try to test our uh, saddles to uh, last for a time span of about 50,000 kilometers. Uh, but I have to say, usually over time, the performance might actually fade, you know? So usually if I have to say uh, that the saddle can perform as it used to perform when you bought it, we can say about like 20,000 kilometers, you know? Uh, but I wanna say that every user sh should check uh, they, they, their saddles in order to find out whether there's some sign of wear, you know? And usually can be, you know, Finding some wrinkles, you know, in the upper, you know, that means that probably the foam is not responding and, and is not cushioning as it used to be. Uh, An oversign could be, usually that could happen with, with some cheap saddles, uh, uh, not from physique, but like they might 
actually collapse or don't when you have the the shell that doesn't respond as it used to be those are, are, are signs that you know that the cell is not performing uh, as it should I've generally either crashed big style within that 20,000 kilometers or just scuffed it to bits down walls. Uh, I must be more careful with my saddles, I have to say. Uh, okay, Thomas Addison. Uh, this is an interesting one. If you had a choice uh, when riding a monster grand tour stage, let's say an epic ride, and you had to take your favorite saddle and a terrible pair of shoes, or your favorite pair of shoes and a terrible saddle, uh, which choice would you go with? Well, I personally use physique and I cannot say like we have terrible shoes or terrible saddles. We are some ones that are better from the other. So I'm, I'm, I feel quite confident that, you know, my ride is going to be good. I would expect uh, to spend more time off the saddle so I can rely on my shoe, but, you know. Okay, good answer. Yeah, he's going to get out of the saddle all the way up the climbs so that he can, uh, yeah, use a, an awful rival saddle and not be too uncomfortable. Okay, last couple of questions now. Um, Chris Andrade, is there a difference in stiffness between nylon stroke plastic soles and carbon fiber soles uh, and are they affecting his ride? Yeah, there is a difference. That's why usually we offer carbon fiber to the top of the range and that's usually where uh, you want to have the most, the stiffest as possible, you know. Stiffness influences the way you transfer the power to the pedals and that's what usually the pro riders want, you know. Uh, carbon fiber obviously, obviously offers so a, a, lightweight conf a lightweight configuration, so that's the big difference about it. Also, you have to take into account, although also the sustainability. Uh, a very stiff sole might actually not be comfortable for a 10 hours ride, whereas a nylon could be a better choice. So it really comes down to what kind of experience you're looking for. You know, a pro racer might want to go for the stiffest and lightest, whereas if you go for a long haul you might want to go for a nylon or a, uh, a composite or a carbon fiber reinforced and that's it. Okay, interesting, thank you. Uh, two more questions then to go. Uh, one in from Sophie Hollinshead. Uh, are women's specific saddles worth it? And she's asking that because she's seen uh, quite a few of the women professional riders using men's saddles. Yeah, I have to say that uh, generally speaking all the saddles in our range are unisex, are not designed specifically for men although we wanted to design something specific for women's you know so we we do a lot of uh, actual riding with testers you know and we receive some inputs from from pro riders and women so we wanted to design something specific from like the luce uh, that we're presenting this year okay uh, last question then uh, a lot of people asking this one people with wide feet how do they choose their shoes they don't want to know which brands accommodate wide feet uh, does the physique come up reasonably narrow I mean I've got very narrow feet and they fit me well yeah uh, I could say that the fitting we're looking into our shoes is more athletic uh, although to speak about physique we never felt the need of uh, offering also like wider feet uh, we didn't get as many complaints especially since we started uh, to use a uh, the volume control system. So most of the time it's not a, like a matter of like how wide the shoe is, but how you can adjust the fit. If you have a proper system that is well designed, you can adjust it properly and having, uh, you can basically uh, s uh, set the shoe to, to be tight where you want it to be tight, you know? So for example, with the volume control, we can adjust uh, how much the forefoot uh, is tight compared to the, to the instep. So, especially with the volume control, we had no issue at all, and that's why, for now, we don't think about offering also like wider, uh, wider options. Okay, thank you very much indeed uh, for your time, Giovanni. Much appreciated. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, you can do so right now by clicking on the globe. Uh, we've talked about Physique's two new ranges. If you haven't seen them just yet, uh, just down below are two videos from Cy Richardson uh, down here unboxing the new range of saddles, and down here unboxing the new shoes.